All right, go ahead. Okay, so that's the title of my talk, or dimension theory for special spectral semi-orthogonal decompositions. Oops, yeah, so I hope we can go down. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, oh, maybe page, okay. Uh, so I recall uh, the story which I talked uh, last live meeting which you have in Miami almost a year ago um, about uh, semi-orthogonal decomposition coming from growth between invariants. So I start with projective algebraic variety over complex numbers. In fact, it should work over any field, even positive characteristic, with a given ample line bundle. So from this variety, we can uh, defined algebraically or symplectically, ground between invariants in genus zero, we don't need high genus, and uh, get a potential. Uh, so let's speak about varieties of complex numbers and speak about usual complex cohomology. Uh, that will be a formal power series on uh, neighborhood of zero of super vector space uh, cohomology of X. Uh, and of the, of the base ring, which is uh, kind of this here, baby version of Novikov ring, which is, um, just four power series in variable t, and t uh, will play the role, the variable which I raised to the pair of degree of a curve. Yeah, so uh, for today's talk, I will make a conjecture, which is one can uh, circumvert with some more complicated language, but it's much more convenient to think it's, that it's true, that the series is, series is many variables, including commodion x and both variables t, and it's convergence when all variables are very close to zero. Now, oh, this seems to be the case in all observable examples, also if you don't know general reason. Yeah, so there is uh, uh, also, there are plenty of conjectures in the subject, like gamma conjecture. Uh, uh, and uh, together with this convergence, it gives what we uh, called with, in our old paper with uh, Ludmilla Antonia, non-commutative hot structure. And that's to get non commutative structure is not uh, the only one. It depends on many parameters. Par parameters runs for some domain, some Frobenius manifold domain in cohomology, and the whole thing will be convergent. And uh, uh, what you get a connection on a trivial bundle with a fiber e e equal to the cohomology of my variety over the plane um, whose coordinate we denote u, as the people denote by. Z and so on. It's, it's, it's really some universal letter for which one should have to make a decision once in your life. Uh, it's generator, uh, actually coordinates on this plane, it will be generator of cohomology of CP infinity, like first chain class. So it's absolutely canonical coordinate. And the equation is U du plus uh, uh, one over U times some matrix K plus uh, some matrix G times multiply by function psi of u is equal to zero. Uh, psi of u is a section of map from u plane to cohomology. Uh, so you see the connection has uh, not a, uh, has second order pole. If you do know such term one over UK, UK it will be a regular singularity. And gamma, gamma conjecture is necessary for our non commutative structure only for the uh, the following thing, which I will not use it at all, that it gives a lattice. Uh, currently constant lattice, which is hypothetically compatible with Stokes filtrations along rays at u equal to zero. So consider uh, solutions and the growth along the rays and all subspaces should be um, uh, lattice, sub lattices. So here are two matrices, K and G, which depends on a point in Frobenius manifold. And K is, uh, is the operator of multiplication quantum product with first chain class. And the operator G is a constant. It's essentially uh, shifted and rescaled uh, degree uh, on HI. It's I over two, uh, but from I also maybe should remove complex dimension. So the whole thing will be symmetric respect to reflection zero. Yeah, so that's the that's basic equation you have. Now, what is the quantum spectrum? It's a spectrum of the separator K. It's a finite subset of uh, complex numbers and depend on point of this Frobenius manifold. 
and now consider pure even and affine submanifold because m is domain cohomology. Uh, it has it's a vector space uh, and given by deformation quantum products by linear combination of algebraic classes in in even cohomology of x. It's certain uh, rational uh, subspace element part of cohomology and we complexify it and get uh, the submanifold time algebraic. And the conjecture, uh, which is uh, uh, kind of in some form was formulated, uh, it, it, maybe in some cases was formulated by Sirik Baranik of me and Dubrovin many years ago, but, uh, but, uh, but now probably have a better formulation now uh, that it's for, oh, sorry, it's a misprint for any point in this uh, algebraic part and any choice you get some red dots will be points in the spectrum, some complex numbers. And we choose a collection of disjoint paths from minus infinity to this pass. So it's called Gabriel of pass. If you get such a picture, then we obtain a semi-orthogonal decomposition of uh, bounded right category of coherent shifts into uh, some full subcategories. R, R is the number of points in the spectrum. R depends on the point on this M algebraic. If it's in special points, this red red dots can collide and get less points. Now, so uh, what uh, uh, the picture is that uh, this Foucault sided category of variety uh, of Landau Ginsburg model, if it exists, um, should be equal to bounded draft category of coherent shifts of X. Uh, okay, and uh, and then. Uh, uh, this path gives you similar toggle in the composition of Foucault's ideal category, so it will be respond to this, this picture on coherent shifts. Uh, yeah, all categories are saturated, so, so and smooth and proper. Mm, uh, in principle, I am not sure that uh, such things exist if you consider points outside of M algebraic, because uh, nobody uh, uh, told us that Foucault that it's a really holomorphic map from some variety to complex plane. In fact, it's even for point of M algebraic, it's not clear whether you get a map from something to point to uh, um, holomorphic map from something to C. Uh, no, so it's something very, very optimistic conjecture, but still let's uh, be, be optimists. Yeah, so what, how this uh, spectrum looks like? Look like, yeah. First, if first of all, if your variety is projective space, then the spectrum is of uh, dimension n. The spectrum are roots of one, of maybe of rotation, of order n plus one. So zero is not a point on the spectrum. We get this this symmetric picture, and semi-orthogonal decomposition is uh, the usual semi-orthogonal uh, decomposition powers small powers of line bundle. And then there was a conjectural blow up formula, which uh, uh, kind of announced uh, a year ago. It's still not finished story, but uh, I have little doubt that it's true. So if my variety is a blow up, if it's a smooth center uh, of code dimension M, mm, then uh, the spectrum of the bl uh, blown out variety has the following shape. Again, for uh, and the shape it's for some domain in a, in a Frobenius manifolds for X tilde. I'll explain uh, in a minute which domain. Uh, so roughly uh, uh, the spectrum looks the following. Uh, it will be very similar to the picture above, but around zero we get something non-trivial. Around zero we get a, a small uh, kind of contracted copy of spectrum of X. And then we get now M minus one copies of spectrum of Y uh, approximately, and they're uh, situated approximately at roots of one for the M minus one. And uh, uh, in, in what limit such picture will appear? Uh, you should take uh, as a, uh, you should uh, take as a killer form uh, the following guy. You consider a very large number multiplied by pullback of the Keller form on X. Uh, 
so uh, so it will be degenerate things which contracts y and then perturbed a little bit by some scalar form on x tilde so you get uh, this uh, this limit and you don't add any other algebraic cycles then when i calculate the spectrum of quantum products uh, when in the limit when i say this very large it's plus infinity a very small factor of zero you will go to picture when i get um, essentially zero and the roots of one so it's, it's like picture above but the zero will be really spec of x so in some limit this uh, kind of red constellations uh, uh, green constellations and blue constellations have all collapsed to a point yeah so it's it's uh, 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 one story and the last thing to remember if it's x is Calabria of general type then the spectrum is always zero unless you deform by identity in cohomology we just make a shift and so the semi orthogonal decomposition which of your category it's a very stupid one it's just this category itself yeah and yeah it's yeah so that's, that's the pictures um, suggest that if the same variety can represent as a blow up in two different ways, uh, then it means that you, this picture which I draw with these constellations, if you move around for Benius manifolds, will deform to another picture with constellations. Yeah, so. Okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, so we have some kind of elementary pieces uh, of the similar orthogonal decomposition, depending on point in. Uh, on your Frobenius manifold. And what we've seen in the previous uh, slide is that uh, sometimes elementary pieces or maybe combined together elementary pieces when you go to some limit when points in spectrum collide, are themselves, themselves are derived category shifts on some variety. Again, so in the most degenerate case, it's uh, your original variety. And this variety has dimensions. Dimensions are in this example, less equals in dimension of x. So uh, what one can do in, in general? So the categories which we meet in the semi orthogonal decomposition are not, not, not necessarily categories of varieties, but very often they're uh, um, very close to categories of varieties. Maybe you have, have varieties with gerbs, or maybe you get something more complicated. Yeah, so the many ideas how to define for saturated category its dimension. Um, so there are various approaches, but the one is, <coughs> which was considered, I think, by Valerie Lunds, is what's third dimension. Uh, namely, uh, what is the dimension set of saturated category? You consider uh, pairs of integers a, i, and k when you have non-trivial x i group from identity factor to k's power of the third factor. Uh, I recall what is a ser functor. It's it's basic notion defined at the beginning of non-commutative algebraic geometry by Wondel Kapranov. Uh, if you have any saturated category, you can see the home from e to f dual. Then it could be home from f to ser functor applied to e. In the case of a category for uh, coherent shifts on the variety, it's uh, twisted by canonical bundle and shifted by uh, by dimension. Yeah, so, uh, so I consider this x from i to powers of ser functor, consider k goes to either plus infinity or minus infinity or both, and consider ratios of i over k, and consider limit of this finite set of rational numbers, and you get a subset of real numbers. It could be a priori, it could be empty set. I have no idea whether there's any example of an empty set. Mm. In all examples, it's non empty. It could be uh, for, uh, for kind of wrong categories like um, uh, representation of a wild quiver, a cyclic quiver. Uh, this will be a whole interval. Uh, but uh, for uh, examples related to geometry, it uh, uh, seems to be always a point, just one element, one number. Uh, uh, so uh, from this formula for the ser functors shift and uh, by canonical functor and twist by dim dimension, it follows that this set dimension is exactly the usual dimension, which is zero, one, two, three, and so on. 
because uh, uh, you get a huge shift here in serve functor and then twist by some line bundle. But, uh, and then you see that I will goes from coming from shift and maybe add to this a little bit of um, some number from zero to dimension, but in the, when the limit can go to infinity, these things disappears. Yeah, so it's something which for any variety, Calabria or not, gives a usual dimension. Uh, when consider uh, for Kaiser the category of uh, oh, sorry, let me spring, x uh, of uh, uh, potential x to power d or in just one dimensional space, then the third dim dimension is functional, and it's in general if consider isolated singularity. It's related to spectrum of singularity. It's the lowest part of the spectrum of singularity. So you see that. Uh, like for isolated singularities, it's always no negative number. Uh, uh, it's actually false from the fact that this spectrum of singularity is symmetric with respect to zero, zero. So this largest element is always positive. So uh, in general, one can uh, ask that the third dimension of any elementary piece, which appears in the semi uh, orthogonal decomposition coming from ground fit invariance, it's always a uh, non-zero rational numbers between zero, uh, non-negative non rational numbers, which, uh, which is bounded by above by dimension of X. Okay. Uh, so, oh, oh, there's a misprint. Oh, sorry. SMS. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you in words. Uh, so the, uh, uh, the, the hypothetical uh, formula for the third dimension of an elementary piece is the following one. Mm. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll just have to listen to me, <laughs> not, uh, not to read the, for, the, the slide, I'll correct it. Uh, you consider this differential equation. Now, uh, when I have a piece, I have a certain um, eigenvalue of matrix K called the I. And now I can see the solution which grows like exponent of one over the I over U and then multiply by some power of U and maybe some power of logarithm. And consider, uh, mm, mm, yeah, so it's, it's written as complete nonsense. And then I consider uh, the, uh, uh, the most negative power which appears. Uh, so you get some non negative rational number. And now multiply this number by minus two, and this will be third dimension. Yeah, it's kind of experimental uh, result. Uh, it's uh, true where for, for this blow up pieces, uh, for example, it immediately follows from the definition. But I, I've checked really hundreds of examples for in the following case. Uh, just a road big computer program. Uh, so consider a uh, uh, final complete intersection of several hypersurfaces of several degrees, D1, DR, in a projective space. It was kind of just the first class of examples. One can go to weighted projective space, toric varieties. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so we have a semi orthogonal decomposition of this uh, category. Uh, at what point you just use uh, this ample line bundle O1 and no other corrections, it gives a kind of quantum products and consider the spectrum. Uh, then you get a uh, uh, few points, uh, uh, you get zero and roots of one of certain order. Uh, and uh, at roots of one, you, you uh, put exceptional objects, uh, zero, zero, O, O, one, and so on. There are some few um, small exceptional collection here in the category, and you get the rest which sits over zero in the spectrum of operator K. And uh, the predicted uh, dimension of this Kuznetsov component is a certain number. Mm. Yeah, there are many uh, reasons to believe why it's true. Mm. First of all, it's because it's uh, comes from the growth of solution, it should come from eigenvalue of monodromy operator and so on. 
or quantum multiplication by K, uh, or, or monodromy for the separator, one can calculate it. And indeed, uh, this fractional part of this number appears as uh, the corresponding roots of one for monodromy for the equation. Uh, so it's a, a good formula. Formal, it has good uh, fractional part, but also has a really good integer part uh, because uh, mm, this was really very, very striking equality in all examples which I was able to check. Mm. You, you can imagine that this, this Kuznetsov soft component is some kind of uh, piece which is pr projective variety of kind of fractional dimension. Uh, and uh, then we're interested in uh, Hochschild cohomology of this category. Hochschild, co Hochschild, homolo sorry, Hochschild homology. And Hochschild homology of the theoretic category is something which is uh, self dual with sparing degree zero. So um, um, algebraic cycles correspond to HH uh, zero, Hochschild homology zero. And uh, uh, one can expect that for any projective variety, we have upper bound dimension is greater than uh, maximum P minus Q for in, in the Hodge homology, which is exactly the Hochschild homology. And the same is uh, uh, true here. Mm. So one can see the maximum possible mm, P minus Q for uh, this uh, Hochschild homology of X, which will be primitive homology of this in the middle homology of this variety. It will be the same as uh, interesting part of transcendental part of Hochschild homology of this Kuznetsov component. So it should have this inequality is that is this third component is third dimension greater than equals to k, number k. But this number k, if you look this, it's equal to, it's not, it's even an odd integer number depending on parity of dimension. And uh, remarkably, the integer part of the third, uh, third dimension, or even half and uh, half, into half, it's kind of right number. Uh, uh, you cannot make it smaller uh, uh, in order to have this inequality, like for usual smooth projective varieties. Yeah, so it's really very remarkable coincidence, which uh, holds hotel cubics, intersection of quadrics, blah blah blah, everything, which you can imagine. Mm. Yeah, so um, strict uh, what happens with the squeezing soft component, it's not always a, a stable components under deformations in along this direction of M algebraic. Because in, um, in principle, it's, uh, uh, this category can have some further uh, semi orthogonal decomposition when you deform by some other algebraic cycles. Uh, so in principle, it's, it's, uh, uh, this dimension can uh, can change if you deform. Uh, mm, mm, uh, our parameters and Frobenius manifold. And this led to me to the following semi-continuity conjecture. Uh, yeah, it's kind of very, very general. It's not concerning these examples. Uh, so that's, mm, suppose we stay, uh, 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 have uh, some point of, uh, of my Frobenius manifolds in the algebraic part, which correspond to some semi orthogonal de decomposition, I get some spectrum. And now deform a little parameters, then, uh, then my matrix will be deformed a little bit. So again, values can split. And then for each uh, kind of uh, um, child of the, uh, uh, some original eigenvalues, the corresponding third dimension can only decrease. Uh, yeah, it's essentially correspond uh, to the following six. Like if you have isolated singularity, like x to power d, then the third dimension is some positive number, like one third for d equals three. But if you deform a little bit, this uh, singularity will be morsified, and for Morse point, the third dimension is zero, because this Foucault is ideal category is just uh, DBO point. Uh, and if you combine it with the blow up conjecture. This, will, this uh, semi-continuity will give us a very strong criterion of, for non-rationality. If for at least one elementary piece of semi orthogonal composition of bounded drive category can shift, okay, sorry for misprints, I'll correct them. Uh, this point to a generic point of M algebraic, 
the third dimension is bigger than dimension of x minus two, then x is not rational. And the reason is uh, the following. When you make blob, uh, you add uh, in the limit uh, categories of the variety where you make blob. It, and you make blob only at variety of co-dimension two or more. But now if we deform it, this, uh, this category will split and then the semi-continued conjecture will say that the dimension will only drop down. So it means that if you make some blow up, blobs of your variety and blobs of Frobenius of projective space, you can never match these pieces of generics third, uh, uh, which are generic point have third dimension bigger than dimension of x minus two. And uh, uh, this is kind of most uh, um, strong uh, claim which we, uh, comparing to what we have before uh, concerning cubic in P4, it was a very special case. In that case, we use a non-trivial kind of non-transcendental cycles and uh, uh, we use this kind of spread of Hochschild homology in transcendental cycles and some other data. And here it's in principle can happen that spreads of um, uh, algebraic cycles will be, no, transcendental cycles will be exactly the dimension of X minus two, but third dimension will be strictly big dimension of X minus two. And then it implies that mm, things cannot really go wrong. So one shouldn't analyze anything. The things will be not rational. And one of many corollaries is the following. If you consider any, again, Miss Prince, a uh, dimensional complete intersection of some degrees in Pn minus one, and if certain uh, numerical condition, which says it's very close to Calabiao, but not exactly, uh, mm, like it has like co-dimension one more or less things like this, then um, the thing is not rational. Yeah, or, or yeah, for example, if it's odd dimensional and this uh, hypersurface and degree of hypersurface is bigger than half of this number of variables, then it's not rational. Yeah, so it will be completely, if, if the whole things go well, it will be completely new result in rational geometry because with modern technology, people can prove that like for some hypersurface certain degree, only very general variety is not rational, but not every one is not rational. Yeah, so it will be dramatically new uh, application to birational geometry. Yeah, so uh, now I'll uh, 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 say a few words about uh, kind of geometric questions related to all this story. Yeah, so, so one can uh, forget about uh, my original variety, go to mirror dual site and forget there is a mirror symmetry, just try to formulate everything in uh, terms of uh, uh, landau ginsburg model. Yeah, so this, uh, this landau ginsburg model uh, so, uh, relative, uh, for me will be the following, it will be a non-compact complex manifold of certain dimension and a holomorphic function. And consider critical locus as a closed analytic subset, subset space, possibly not reduced. And I put several constraints on this pair, uh, Y, W. The first is this critical locus is compact. Uh, 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 the second constraint is also very important. And um, if there exists a Keller metric, the choice is not part of the structure, so only existence is required. And this uh, sort of assumption that this space is non-empty and connected and critical values is zero. Yeah, uh, this landau ginsburg model, um, it differs, differs from what usually uh, we consider, we consider usually that uh, put the constraints that W is a proper map. But if it's a proper map, we can choose uh, any connected components of critical locus, consider just small neighborhood of it. And what I consider it depends on, on, on this arbitrary small neighborhood. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, so I wrote it's, you, it's really, you don't need the whole variety Y, you need only germ at critical locus. 
Now consider um, C-graded complex. So I consider uh, C infinity forms on this uh, neighborhood, uh, global C infinity forms, and take form power series in the, sa the same famous variable u, and write as this total differential, which is d bar plus u d times multiplication by dw. Uh, it's uh, um, well, I consider it's called hyper cohomology in kind of analytic, complex analytic settings. I consider shift of uh, analytic forms on Y, consider form power series in U, and again get this huge shift, not even quasi coherent, and uh, in analytic topology and use this differential UD plus DW. Yeah, and if you have um, a section of this element of this complex, which is not a form power series, but actually a convergence from some uh, small values of u and maybe on smaller neighborhood of uh, uh, critical set, then I get then we get what? Uh, uh, then uh, the meaning that d tot of alpha equal to zero means that something very uh, uh, simple, namely you get a closed differential form uh, depending on parameter u. Uh, we use a, a small but non-zero complex number, namely you can see e to w divided over u and then uh, multiply by u to power gr, the gr is operator, this Hodge grading, mm, and alpha is equal to zero. Yeah, so I get a family of uh, uh, cohomology classes and uh, you can try to integrate the cohomology classes in boundary, get uh, some kind of approximately flat connection. Yeah, so that's, 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 that's the meaning of this differential and uh, and the conjecture which is Hodge Durham degeneration of Lau Ginzburg models says that it's homology is a free module or a finite rank like a flat module or form power series. Yeah so the, the above explanation when you get a convergence series it's kind of, it has kind of nothing to do with this degeneration in a sense. Yeah uh, that's uh, uh, that's still conjecture. So, in, if if all the if everything was a piece, of some open neighborhood of critical locus in for the proper map in algebra geometric situation, uh, that is true by irregular hot theory. So, um, it, uh, and uh, originally many years ago with Barankov, and we, we made a proof, never never published it, uh, and it was the beginning of irregular hot theory, just imitate hot theory with exponential terms. And then Michizuki developed a really huge machinery. Uh, uh, but, uh, but the proof is really mystery. And uh, again, a long time ago, when Claude Sabah uh, learned from our result with Baranikov, he deduced from theory of mixed coach modules in some very unclear way to me up to now. and. Uh, then uh, Marihika Saito also had a lot of communications here on related subjects, but uh, I'm not sure that it's in the generality which I formulated, it's, it's still established. Okay, so, so I get this uh, mm, mm, story, so I get this cohomology. Uh, mm, now I imagine that my variety is endowed with an everywhere non-vanishing holomorphic volume form. Oh, sorry, D should be equal to N. Sorry for misprints. Uh, uh, that's, a, that's the case of landau gisberg models which are mirror dual to Fano varieties. Or, or maybe not Fano varieties as well because for case adult category should be Z-graded. And for Z-grading we need holomorphic volume form. Uh, 
and then I claim in this case this uh, cohomology are always non-zero and have actually canonical one-dimensional subspace namely uh, where it comes from mm. uh, so, so just uh, I, I remind you this uh, 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 complex uh, we can see the cohomology series in U with this differential. And now when you set U equal to zero, uh, because it's a vector bundle according to the generation conjecture, we just kill the first term U, U times D and we get multiplication by DW. Yeah, so this um, volume element is, is definitely killed by everything. It gives class and hence hyper cohomology of Y with shift of, an, uh, analytic form is differential DW. But now let's restrict this uh, uh, complex of shifts to this critical locus. And critical locus differential is equal to zero. So we consider just a hyper cohomology map to cohomology of critical locus. But now uh, with a complex with zero differential, so it will be direct sum. And hyper cohomology will have a direct sum and then moral we can restrict to uh, reduce critical locus. The end cohomology is, is uh, shift O. And because it's a uh, non-empty connected variety, maybe singular one, oh, oh sorry, H zero of shift O. That's was again misprint because omega N uh, and H zero of shift O contains a constant. It's a con uh, it's not trivial uh, space of dimension one. So you get a map so we get a map from uh, this hyper cohomology to one dimensional space and volume element by this isomorphism goes to one. So we see that we have really clear splitting. We get a very can a canonical one dimensional space in this hyper cohomology. And the cohomology that is a conjecture is that it looks at the leading growth of solutions appears in exactly one one dimensional subspace on cohomology of d tot. So we get some kind of um, uh, if you mod mod out by solution which has smaller growth, you get one dimensional bundle and its fiber at zero will be exactly this one dimensional space. Oh, so it's, uh, so it actually gives you a way to check on computer what is the maximal growth. So you can see the, uh, any solution which has a li limit will, will get volume element. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's, uh, so it, they say that growth really appears really as multiplicity one, uh, which is roughly correspond to, uh, by, by the general picture if you compare to this all uh, things with cohomology to, uh, uh, yeah, if consider um, like blow up of variety, it's not like H zero variety is one dimensional. Yeah, so it's a dual picture. Yeah. and. Yeah, so here one can ask questions not for uh, this hypothetical uh, decomposition of KTU coherent shift, but, but for Landau Ginsburg models. And now one can ask what is the general reason for semi continuity? One can formulate some, something very concrete question, which will be sufficient for all purposes, uh, at least implications to rational equations, and really adapted to. Uh, uh, Grom Witten invariance for, uh, and for, uh, for algebraic varieties. So suppose I have a, a semi simple apparatus. Now n is some dimension of some cohomology, the spectrum in integers. And we have two form power series, A and K, satisfying uh, two equations. Those uh, A, A and K are functions of T. Uh, so we have the commute and T D T K is equal to plus A G is equal to zero, which uh, means that we get a flat connection um, in two variables. It has singularities both in U equal to zero and T equal to zero. And uh, in real life example, T equal to limit T equal to zero is correspond to going to the classical limit. Uh, so we get this Eisenbahn-Dorby family of this non-commutative host structure. Yeah, so one get a, uh, uh, oh, sorry, it was copy paste. Then I get a special connection and generic connection. 
And the question, the same question, sorry, copy paste for some text. Uh, uh, it said that this um, the most singular growth for uh, special connection is more singular than for generic connection. Yeah, if, uh, yeah. First of all, I want to say that all the story about this um, uh, this two relations between three matrices can be formulated that this series key can be uniquely reconstructed from K0 and the series A. And what you get, uh, you can um, just uh, substitute, uh, try to solve this equation and get a sequence of infinite six equation on infinite collection of matrices, A0, 1, and 2. From K0, you need, from K need only K0 and also need this matrix G. And you get this uh, big system of equations, which describes the whole situation. Uh, so the conjecture, um, uh, again, it's it's maybe too optimistic, but uh, at least uh, the first experiment show, uh, uh, shows that it should be true, is it's the largest growth of a regular solution of, uh, uh, oops, there's some, there's some pluses missing here, of uh, u du plus k0 u plus g is more singular than those from u du plus k u plus g of the base field c of t. One can ask what is the largest growth? Uh, it's uh, it's something pretty interesting story, uh, when I use a base field, not complex numbers, but uh, something bizarre. Uh, you just, uh, what you do is the following. Mm. Uh, it's very general conjecture without any uh, anything to do with uh, Frobenius manifolds and so on. We don't even know that uh, that we get um, um, rational numbers f is exponents of the largest growth. Uh, uh, so you get some elements of complex numbers. And now when you consider base field COT, you get some elements of this field, or maybe it's algebraic extensions, not, not even in numbers. Um, but uh, the conjecture is that the real parts are different by rational numbers anyhow, and then one can uh, make sense of these things algebraically. Uh, so again, first experiment shows that it seems to be true. So it's very uh, kind of fundamental general class equations about this collection of matrices, setting this system of equations. And if it's true, then it will imply all necessary bounds for the application of rationality, modular this blow up conjecture, which is still open. Yeah, so that's that's the picture. And maybe I stop now. Okay. So what is the largest growth when your coefficients depend on T? Uh, ah, no, no uh, of course, you, you, you're right. Um, no, the largest growth, I think it will be uh, u to some complex number. Uh, and this, uh, maybe some power of logarithm, and this complex number will be not elements of the C of T at all. And, uh, and the, you can see this. Mm, this exponent the is, is this the exponent, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah a, real, a real part of the exponent, yeah. Yeah, sorry for misprints, I will uh, correct my misprints and send you corrected files. And... Uh, uh, yeah. And by the way, this spectrum, which you mentioned, the <clears throat> kind of SER spectrum, yeah. uh, could it be kind of poles of some um, uh, infinite series? Uh, no, ser, ser, ser dimension, it's not ser, ser dimension. Yeah, yeah I it's... mean, yeah, but the, the collection for the semi-orthogonal decomposition gives yeah. you some collection of numbers. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Can there be kind of uh, um, poles of some... Um, uh, series yeah. of motivic origin. Yeah, no, no, in kind of, it seems to relate it to kind of largest zero of Bernstein polynomial and even for non isolated singularities. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, right. okay. yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, but my idea is that it's, uh, it's uh, because it's largest growth should be something related to this like essential skeleton and this idea of maximal something. In, Insertion skeleton. How? I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it, it, again, in Landau Ginsburg situation, it, it's uh, actually it's pretty funny numbers. One can look in examples. If you have Landau Ginsburg model, what's the this largest growth? You get, it has this critical locus. Critical locus could be very, very complicated. Uh, and then this dimension, uh, which we extract from this procedure, it's always uh, larger equal than the dimension of critical locus. And if it's uh, critical locus is uh, some smooth variety and transversal, you get some isolated singularity, uh, then it will be a dimension of critical locus, geometric dimension plus this is some positive number related to this isolated singularity, like for series for x cube, oh. we get one, three, one, three, and so on, one, so on, so on. Yeah, so you yeah. get a little bit of fractional dimension coming from uh, transversal directions. Yeah, okay, okay. thank you. Yeah. Okay, maybe I stop sharing screen. Okay. So Max, in the yeah. in the cost to the RAM degeneration conjecture, um, yeah. uh, you know, there was this, um, uh, recent work like from last year by C. Lee and Hao Wen, no. uh, where okay. they redid uh, the proof of the degeneration in the usual situation by using uh, uh, twisted, you know, so, so they did L2 uh, forms rather than, uh, for a Keller metric rather than. Uh, no, 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 with, with Baranik we also done L2. Yeah, it's very similar to what you were doing with Baranik, but you know, they, they had to use twisted Sobolev spaces and they had, a very general result about the generation, but they had a condition on the function, on the growth of the function at the boundary, this, this strong ellipticity condition. But yeah. could it be that that actually this 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 uh, compactness property that you are um, that you are um, uh, requiring, and maybe some completeness of the you know, because you are requiring really a Calabi L. So if there is a Ricci flat metric and you know it's complete. No, 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 I don't reflect Calabi. No, there's nothing about Calabi L appears late. It's without Calabi condition. No, but you had that the form, there is a volume form, right? Ah, it's no, it's late. I get uh, I, uh, this Calabi L form says it's, it's hyperconvolge is not zero. Oh, it's, I see. Yeah, yeah. In principle, this hyperconvolge could be zero if it's not Calabi L, right? I can easily construct examples for. Um, like critical locus will be elliptic curve, but vanishing cycle form but, on trivial so local we systems. The, we expect the degeneration even without any- uh, Anything, without anything, yeah, sure. It's, it, it, it was very general for any function. But anyway, so that maybe that, 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 that proof that Celia and, 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 and Wen gave, maybe that actually will, will give you a proof in-, in, in, in Yeah, but- It's bigger generality than we know it. Yeah, but, no, because I, do, I, don't, I uh, don't want my map to be proper at all. I just want yeah, they don't want it to be proper either, but, yeah, yeah, but see, yeah. they have this condition on the function, which is a yeah, simple yeah. electricity yeah. condition. But, uh, yeah, okay, maybe you can send me the reference. Okay. Hi, can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, so maybe you mentioned, but about the third dimension, yeah. is there a nice relation of a third dimension of uh, some category versus third dimension of uh, pieces of a stereotonal decomposition? In general, I have no idea. And uh, you see that pieces of semi orthogonal decomposition could be nasty because uh, those are the general result um, maybe by Ephemus that any category of finite type is a, a piece of some non geometric semi orthogonal decomposition for the direct category of coherences of some variety. In particular, can get, I can get a wild quiver, like Kronecker quiver with three arrows which will be a piece of similar trunkal decomposition of some variety, not coming from all the series of Gromfit invariants, just some abstract object game. And then we get a kind of, comp maybe it still can have an equality. Yeah, I'm not sure. Because for this, uh, then we get um, the set dimension will be not a number, but interval. Uh, but maybe it's still kind of bounded. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's an interesting question. I can try to study it. It's abstract algebraic equation. Maybe there's an equality for certain dimensions as well. And, and even in this case, when you suppose you do this decomposition that you, you did with yeah. the Gromovit invariance, if you yeah. take like a partial, a partial, uh, like a subset of those pieces, yeah, is that a good description of what those generate? Or... Uh, no, about subsets of pieces. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, uh, 
no, no, what I claim uh, for all this picture is that this uh, kind of geometric semi-retrograde decomposition coming from ground vitro invariants are very special because third dimensions will be numbers, not intervals. Mm -hmm. Get something close to usual geometry. Thank you. Okay, maybe I'll stop sharing.